Hi, I'm Dr. Arturo Bonilla and welcome to another uh, short video on, on hearing. Um, I constantly get asked, Dr. Bonilla, how is it that um, my child can hear when there's no ear canal and the child has a microtia? Well, um, the explanation is actually rather simple. It sounds complicated, but it really is. Once we get a basic understanding of the actual anatomy and how the hearing works, then it's a pretty uh, easy concept to understand. So um, I know it's really easy to, to read things on text and read things on, on websites and things like that, but it's, it's so much easier to actually visualize it and to see um, how well this whole thing works. So I'm gonna be showing you this today. Hopefully it won't take too long on an ear model and then I'll show you kind of a really cool uh, way of really, really um, uh, hitting home as far as how hearing really works once sound uh, hits the, uh, the ear. Okay, so let's begin. So the, the ear consists of three parts, the outer, the middle, and the inner ear. The outer ear consists of this whole part right here all the way to the eardrum, which includes the whole ear canal all the way to the eardrum. The middle ear is a middle, it's very, very small middle ear space that's full of gas. And inside this middle ear space, there are actually three bones. Let me move this like this. Um, there's this bone here, there's this bone here, and there's a bone right there. It's called the stapes. This is actually the smallest bone in our body, and this is what it looks like actually next to a penny. Okay, so um, then you have the inner ear. Now in the inner ear there's, there's two organs. One is the balance organ, which is this one like this. And then you have one that looks like a snail, which is this part right here. Okay, um, that's the important, that's our hearing nerve. So the way that works, um, the way sound works is sound comes in through here, goes straight through our ear canal, and strikes our eardrum. Now this eardrum actually vibrates. Let's move like this. So it vibrates when sound hits it, like this. And that vibration causes this bone to vibrate onto this bone, and that bone to vibrate onto this very last bone, which is called the stapes, a small one, um, which is this one right here, right there. And this last bone here vibrates into this inner ear, okay? And it moves, it moves in and out like the piston of a car. And this inner ear is full of fluid, so as, as this little last bone is moving when sound comes all the way through here, um, that movement causes a wave of fluid to go all the way around this little snail-like structure. It's called the cochlea. And there are little nerve rootlets inside here that become stimulated as that wave passes um, by it. That stimulation sends an electrical impulse to the brain via this nerve right here, which is called the auditory nerve. That's how uh, hearing works. Now when the child has a microtia and an atresia, and there's lack of this ear, and all of a sudden there's, there's no ear canal here, okay? So there's no ear canal. Well, how is it that, that um, the child can hear then? Again, that's the whole theory of bone conduction. Sound strikes our skull, bypasses the outer, and the middle ear and it goes straight to this inner ear. Um, now one thing that's important is that the outer and the middle ear form at the same time. So when something happened outside here like a microtia, almost always something happened in the middle ear um, here um, and usually what happens here is that the middle ear bones are fused, they don't really move that well. Luckily for all of us, the outer and the middle ear form at a totally separate time as the inner ear. This inner ear forms at a separate time as these, so we don't need this and we don't need th this to hear. So we don't need outer or middle, we just need this inner ear to hear. And what happens is now, um, sound, when sound strikes our skull, it bypasses all this and a little vibration when the sound hits our skull goes straight to this inner ear and that's how we hear sound. So when a child comes in with a microtia and an atresia um, and the parents are really worried about, oh my gosh, my child is deaf, no, most time they're not deaf. As a matter of fact, almost all the time they're not deaf. Almost all the time, their inner ears, their hearing nerve works perfectly normal. Okay, so um, now that you understand the anatomy of the ear, let's go back again. How is it that a child can hear with a microtia and an atresia, which means no ear canal, how is it that they can hear on that side uh, when there is no, no hole. Well, again, it's all through bone conduction, vibration. So, like I explained before, sound strikes our skull, um, and even though it's a mini vibration, we don't really feel it. It bypasses the outer in the middle ear and goes straight uh, to that inner ear via vibration. 
So when somebody talks about, well, how does the Baja work or what does the Baja do? Is it just a loud hearing aid? Does it amplify sound? No, it doesn't do any of that. Um, kind of making it as basic as I can, basically the Baja, all it is is it's a device um, that vibrates with sound. So sound hits it into a little microphone. The microphone causes that little device to vibrate and that little vibration basically strikes our skull and that, that vibration makes it straight into that inner ear and that's how these uh, children can hear. And I'm going to demonstrate to you um, what a little vibration does and I'll, I'll hook this up to my iPhone and, and, and I'll put a song on it and you can really appreciate what happens when sound actually hits the skull and, and you'll be, under, be able to understand what your child hears um, from that inner ear. Okay, let's show you right now. Now I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to give you a little demonstration about how sound actually works. This is a really cool thing I love to show the kids um, because um, this is where you can really, really appreciate what, actu what sound actually does um, when it strikes our forehead and really it will give a parent a really, really good understanding about what your child uh, hears uh, the second any of these little devices uh, are used. So right now, I want to show you this. This is just a little device like this, just a little square and it's a processor. All it does, it just vibrates with sound. And sound doesn't come out of it, it's just a vibration that comes out of it through an electrical signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a song and um, you won't really be able to hear it until it actually strikes the skull. And this is kind of, this vibration goes straight to that inner ear. And this is what the kids hear when I show them in the office. And almost 100% of them have this huge smile because they can hear something really, really cool. So let me, let me put this song. So right now you really can't hear anything. I mean, there, there's, there's no sound that's coming out of this device, but you can really kind of see what happens the second I touch this. Here we go. Now that's all, that's only vibration, okay? Um, if you feel it, you can feel a little vibration on this device, um, but no sound really comes out of it. But when it touches the skull, there you go. Isn't that really cool? So that's how bone conduction works. That's why these children are not deaf. That's why these little devices can actually help the child hear um, on that side effective, whether it's a soft band or a Baja, uh, implant um, or of course the option of ear canal surgery um, it's really important when we're talking about um, we're talking about what to do what options uh, to go with uh, to speak to your surgeon go through all the options and I have a lot of parents who, who tell me this is the only option I want this is the only way I want to go and that's perfectly fine I respect that but I really really recommend to go through all the options first and know the goods and the bads of everything and then you can really really make a good decision so I really hope you enjoyed uh, this quick uh, demonstration um, again sometimes you really have to just visualize it to, to understand it well and it's also really important to understand that there are three parts of the ear when somebody says inner ear uh, well they usually mean inner ear or do they usually mean middle ear so it's rather confusing but that part of it if we just simplify it and divide it as outer middle and inner uh, the whole concept is a little bit easier to understand so I hope this video really really helped um, I ask you to please share this I think it will really help a lot of um, of parents, a lot of families that have children that have microtia and atresia. Um, if you share it any place that you can, I think they would really, really appreciate it. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, you can always call me or email me and my website's right there. Thank you. Because I'm